Good morning and welcome to another edition of the Morning Devotional. Today is Thursday, October 6th, 2022. This is edition number four of season six. As we continue to look at the book of Genesis, this morning we are in Exodus chapter four. Let's pray together first and then we'll consider this chapter together. Father, as we look at your word again this morning, we look in with humble expectation that you would guide and teach us and you would instruct us. We ask for your help and your favor, that you would give us grace, that you would strengthen us, that you would cause us to see your kindness and goodness, that you'd forgive us for the ways in which we stray from your word, and that you, by your Spirit now, would teach us, we pray, for Christ's sake. Amen. When we left uh, uh, the narrative in Exodus chapter 3, it really continues. It spills over into Exodus 4 as Moses answers God as he is as he has given the comfort, as he has given the promise, as he has told Moses what he would do, uh, we have what is common for most of us. We have an objection. And Exodus 4 begins that way. Then Moses answered, But behold, they will not believe me or listen to my voice, for they will say, The Lord did not appear to you. Too often in the church we hear things that are similar that way. Um, Not exact, of course. There's not a perfect parallel here, but oftentimes in the preaching of the Word of God, people will reject for any number of reasons. They will say that God did not speak to you in that in, in the right sense of what that means. Um, that's not what God meant. Um, and and we, we tend to make excuses for, uh, for not obeying the things that God tells us to do. Moses has been clearly instructed. He's been comforted. He's been told the promise, uh, how it would all unfold up front. And Moses objects. He says, oh, the people aren't going to listen to me. And well, the Lord is not uh, unkind to him uh, in very much the same way he is not unkind to us. We are often faithless people. Moses is faithless here. He's wrestling with this whole daunting task. Can you imagine? So the Lord didn't uh, the Lord said to him, verse 2, what is, it that, what is that in your hand? He said, a staff. And he said, throw it on the ground. So he threw it on the ground and became a serpent. Moses ran from it. You can almost picture the scene. But the Lord said to Moses, put out your hand and catch it by the tail. So he did, and he caught it, and it became a staff again. In verse 5, that they may believe that the Lord, the God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has appeared to you. Again, the Lord said to him, put your hand inside your cloak. And he put his hand inside his cloak, and when he took it out, it was leprous. Put it back in, and it was healed. It was cleansed. Now, these are signs that God gives to Moses that he's to use. He's to employ these signs uh, to the people to demonstrate, to prove uh, that he is the spokesperson of God. He is sent by God. Now, in the New Testament, we very much see that happening in the very life of the Lord Jesus Christ as he performed numerous miracles, even raising the dead. And, and healing the blind, giving sight to the blind, as that which proved, that substantiated his claims, as substantiated uh, uh, who he was. And, and so here we very much have that, God providing for Moses in this way, uh, God doing the work that he might substantiate Moses as the spokesperson of God. And then you would think, of course, that that would be enough. It's not. Verse 10, Moses, I'm not eloquent. I don't talk well. I, you know, I find somebody else. Um, I, I, you know, I, I can't do this. Uh, I'm not gifted enough. And, um, and, and, and the Lord um, said to him uh, in verse 11, who has made man's mouth, who, is, who makes him mute or deaf or seeing or blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Now, therefore, go, and I will be with your mouth and teach what you shall speak. But again, Moses protests instead of just, yes, Lord. He protests, oh, please send someone else, and then the Lord is angry. Now, he was patient with him in the beginning. He was patient again in the middle, but now the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses. He said, is there not, is there not Aaron, your brother, the Levite? I know that he can speak well. Behold, he is coming out to meet you, and when he sees you, he will be glad in his heart. You shall speak to him and put the words in his mouth, and I will be with your mouth and with his mouth and will teach you both what to do. Now, God here provides for Moses a companion, not any ordinary companion, Aaron, who will become the first high priest of Israel, a man who um, apparently speaks better than Moses, who knows, but the man that God's going to use 
um, combined with Moses uh, to free the people. And so we see married up here in this very event, we see Moses as the type of Christ, the type of mediator, the type of redeemer. But we also see Aaron now, the priest, who Christ also, as, as one of his offices, fulfills as the one who lays down his life, a ransom for many, the one who eat, intercedes on behalf of, of the people before the Father. Uh, this is what Aaron is going to do combined with the labors of Moses. And so God gives these things to Moses to help him, and he returns then, therefore, back to Egypt. And we have that interesting events of uh, Zipporah threatening uh, the, the very life of Moses uh, was at, at risk here because the son had not yet been circumcised. Um, and the chapter then closes uh, with Moses and Aaron gathering together all the elders of the people of Israel. Aaron spoke all the words that the Lord had spoken to Moses and did the signs in the sight of the people. Much the same way in which we do that on the Lord's Day when you hear from, uh, we hear the living voice of Christ speaking in a sermon. And then we enjoy the benefits of the sacrament. We hear the word and then we touch and taste and smell and see all of these things in front of us to substantiate, to prove that which God has promised in the preaching of his word. So Aaron speaks these things. He gives the signs to the people and the people believed. And when they heard that the Lord had visited the people of Israel and they had seen their affliction, they bowed their heads and worshiped. And that's what we too must do as we hear from our God. Now, through weak instruments, every Lord's day, undoubtedly it happens. Uh, ministers are not perfect people. I know I'm one of them, and I just told a friend of mine not too long ago that the biggest sinner in the church is probably the pastor. The fact remains, however, that God has redeemed me, he's redeemed you, but he's also set me apart, set other ministers apart to proclaim the excellencies of Christ. And when we hear that, we should worship in our hearts and our minds. We should worship him. Now, we know that people aren't going to remain this way. They're going to gravitate into murmuring and complaining. In fact, it's not going to take very long for them to go there. They're good and they're fine right now, probably expecting immediate relief, uh, which does not come uh, until much later. Uh, but for now, the people rejoice at the promise of the hope of freedom, the hope of redemption that comes through the voice of Moses and Aaron, but really comes ultimately from the hand of God. Well, I trust these times are helpful for you. I hope they are. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave me a note. The way to reach me is right there before you on the screen. And so until the Friday edition, when we consider Exodus chapter 5, may the Lord bless you today, and may you serve him. God bless.